You said you're assigned to Pontiac? Yeah, the city of Pontiac substation. Okay. Now, I want to direct your attention to November the 30th, 2021. Do you remember that day? I do. Okay, were you working? I was. We heard testimony yesterday regarding a search warrant at 112 East in, the, in Oxford, the Crumbly family home. Did you participate in that search warrant? I did. Okay. Now, if you could tell us, please, what happens um, when a house is secured for a search warrant? Yeah, so securing the house prior to uh, getting the search warrant, if you're going to go initially and just kind of do an initial sweep of the house to make sure no one's inside the house, um, <coughs> no one's injured inside of the house, and then after that, you're just going to secure the house until you get the authorization from the judge, um, just for like preservation of evidence and make sure that if there is evidence inside the house that it's not tampered with. Okay, and did you do that in this case? I did. And who else was with you? Uh, Detective McPherson, Detective Steele. Uh, Detective Peschke, Deputy Zajac, uh, Deputy Mozak, and uh, Fred Brandon was there too. From the ETF? Correct. Okay. Now, when you were sent to that location, did you know what would be found there? No. Okay. And when were you assigned with this task? Um, af after we initially searched the school, um, my supervisor at the time, Sergeant Hicks, he uh, gathered a few, a few of us up and said, to go to 112 East Street to secure the residence. Okay. So you responded to the school first, and then you were tasked with securing the, the residence at 112 East in Oxford? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to show you what's been admitted as People's 270. Sir, is this a photograph? Does this photograph fairly and accurately depict the address at 112 East? It does. Okay. Describe the layout for us of the home. Yeah, so it's a... Uh when you walk in here, that's the front of the residence that faces East Street. Um, you walk in um, to your immediate right, there's a living room area with a couch, there's a TV. Um, you walk into the left, it was like the uh, dining room, there was a table, chairs. Um, through that, there was a kitchen. Um, off the kitchen, there was two bedrooms, one on the right, one on the left, the bathroom. Yeah, I'm going to show you what's been yeah. as well as 205. Is this a sketch of the home? Correct. Okay. And so we have... A front entrance at the top of the diagram here? Correct. Okay, can you just walk us through here? Yeah, so uh, where the sheriff's symbol sign is there at the front of the residence, um, you walk in, so be on the left of this picture here is the living room. Um, there's some couches, there's a TV stand, uh, table. To the right there of that was the dining room. There's a, like a kitchen table, um, some chairs. I think there's some workout equipment in there. Um, past that, there's a little opening right there which led to the kitchen. Uh, refrigerator island, some cabinets. Um, so right there to the left um, would be the entrance. There's a little hallway to two bedrooms. There's one bedroom. That's north bedroom. There's a bathroom in between that. And then across the hallway, there's like the middle bedroom. Uh, was the bedrooms. And then uh, you come out of there. There was a little hallway. Um, there was an opening to like the landing that led to the basement, the foyer. Um, and then it was what was the master bedroom was immediately past that. Okay. Now, prior to participating in the search of this home, did you learn which bedrooms were associated with the shooter? I did. Which ones? So, in this picture here, you see North bedroom was one of the shooter's bedrooms, and then directly across the hallway, which is labeled the middle bedroom there, was also the shooter's bedroom. Okay, so his rooms were what we have labeled here as North bedroom and then middle bedroom. Both are adjacent to the bathroom, and middle bedroom is adjacent to the master bedroom. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Now tell us, <clears throat> when you first entered the home to secure it for a search warrant, did you see anything of note? Yeah, so obviously when you're, you're kind of just doing the search, but you're obviously still, if, you're, if you see things, you take a mental note of what you see. Um, and when I walked into what I was described as a master bedroom, there was an open uh, six-hour gun box on the bed, and next to that was an empty box of a uh, nine-millimeter ammunition. Okay. On the bed as well. Did you touch that? I did not. No. Okay. So when you see something like that, what do you do? You just kind of take a mental note of it, um, and obviously once you get the authorization from the judge and the search warrant, you're going to go um, search the house, and my partner and I were tasked with searching that bedroom, so okay. we were aware before we came in. So after the home was secured and you confirmed that, well, first of all, when it was secured, did you encounter either James or Jennifer Crumley? I did. I had a uh, brief encounter with James Crumley. Okay. Is he in court today? He is. Can you please point to him and describe something he's wearing? Uh, he's wearing the suit with the blue shirt and the blue tie. You're going to with the record reflect identification defendant? The record is still reflect. Okay. Tell us where you encountered James Crumley when you arrived on scene. Uh, when I initially got there, he was secured in, 
I don't remember who, Deputy Mozak or Deputy Zajac's uh, patrol vehicle. Okay. Now, if an admitted video of, an, uh, of a patrol video indicated 2.46 p.m. arrival on November the 30th, 2021, does that seem right to you? Yes. Okay. Did you speak with Mr. Kremlin? I did. Okay. Um, did you speak with him on scene there or when he was transported to the substation? So I had a brief conversation with him prior or at the substation, really nothing to know. Really he was taken back to the uh, residence, and that's where I had more of a, not in depth, but more of a conversation with him outside of the residence. Okay. So I'm going to show you and play what's been admitted as People's 300. This is the in-car video that you referenced. This way is the bottom one. Thank you. Got to see right now. Why is she in here? I don't know. Can you take the handcuffs off from me, please? Here, please. Okay. Button first. Okay. Yeah. Good. It's not going to be long for those handcuffs. I promise. Why am I in the cuffs, though? I know we can figure out everything. It hurts. Like, it really hurts.
to hire a good enough accountant. If you're in the market for a brand new room, now is the absolute best time to buy because the prices have never been lower. For the best deal on earth that doesn't leave, just head to hirebrickgun.com. Without you, you can cut the top of the session for the year. And that's not that. Timestamp is 2.50 p.m. on November 30th. Does that appear right to you? It does. Okay. <clears throat> now, you said James was transported to the substation and taken back? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot going on. So it, initially, we were kind of instructed to take James to the substation and interview him. Um, after a conversation with, I believe, Sergeant Bryan, it was a term that he had already spoken with uh, detectives prior to us getting there. So he was taken back to the house um, while we were waiting for the search warrant to be uh, completed. Okay, so we heard testimonies in this trial that Sergeant Bryan began that interview at 1.58 p.m., and this occurred after that, is that right? Yeah, it was after okay. the initial interview. Did you have some conversation with James about obtaining a search warrant for the home? Yeah, I had a brief conversation with him. Okay, did you let him know you were looking for firearms? I did, yes. Okay. And would that conversation have been recorded on the in-car video system as well? Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been admitted and play for you. It's 204. This is a portion of the in-car video from 3.42 p.m. on November 30th. Hey, man. Hey, so let me just grab your name real quick. I know you already got it, but I don't know what I'm talking to you. Can you just spell it? James. Yeah. You know my middle name, too? No, what's your last name? Crumbly, C-R-U-M-B-L-D-Y. What's your phone number? Six four eight three. Okay. So what's going on is we're waiting for uh, to complete the search warrant. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to you guys obviously while we're waiting to go into the house we can't have you guys go back in right now. Just wait until we get the search warrant. So you're more than welcome to either sit in here. You're more than welcome to get in your car and hang out until this is done. You're more than welcome to go get a cup of coffee if you want or something. But it's probably going to be a little while. Um, so it's kind of up to you, but while we're waiting for that, we just ask God to see, please don't go sit inside the house while we're waiting for everything to be done, okay? Um, in the meantime, can you tell me where those guns are so you don't have to rip your house apart? Is that cool? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We're, they're in a, they're in a, gun, a gun case. It's, we're, we're, we're at the house. Okay. And if you go to the very back of the, the, the very back of the house. We're like the, the Oscu is sitting? Yes. Okay. Yes. And he's nice. He's yeah, yeah, he's nice. So then you guys can just be cognizant of the doors we have cats. Okay. Okay. Um, but if you go into that back bedroom, there's okay. a dresser on the left with the TV sitting on yep, yep. the very right cabinet door. Okay. Inside of there, there's a black gun case that's okay. locked. Okay. And then there's some 20, it, there's just, there's only a 20, there's a 22 um, Derringer okay. and a 22 um, Keltec It's locked. Pistol. The case is locked. Can we, how would we get into that? Do you mind if we get into that? I mean, have to. Is it kind of like, what kind of, is that a combination on it's it? It's a combination. It's, okay. Do you yeah. mind if we, because we're going to have to get the guns, obviously, for now. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Do you mind? Okay. Otherwise, I don't want to have to, you know what I mean? Just no, I, I, I'm completely open, and yeah. I want you guys to do what you have to do. I mean, zero. 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 Three zeros? Four. And that's that's the only oh okay and then in the bedroom to the left of the um, the left of the bathroom okay there is a BB gun okay it's unloaded okay but it looks like a freaking assault rifle okay cool. it's a, it's one of those air AR-15 well, it's not AR-15. It's something different, but it's a it's one of those air you know air cartridge yeah. oh, I got BB it. guns. Okay, fair enough. Um, okay, but that's just I mean that's just sitting out. So don't freak out when you guys see that. No, it's I, not a. I appreciate the heads up. Yeah. Are you going to want to hang tight, or you, what are you guys going to want to do? Well, I mean, where's my wife? I want to you know. What, what does she want to do? 
Okay. Do you want to go with your wife then? Yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry. Am I? Am I <laughs> you know, sir. You talked to Sergeant Brian earlier. Yes. Okay. He's going to call you when you guys are able to come back. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I'll need my phone back. Um, so backing up just a little bit, can you tell us why Jennifer Crumbly was in cuffs? Yeah, there, there was multiple, there were two detectives, there was deputies on scene. Um, I didn't take part in placing her in handcuffs. Um, that would have been up to the deputy that put her in handcuffs. And the deputies that arrived were coming right from the school, is that right? Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, just now in this, this interview with James Crumbly in the back of the car, he told you the combination code was 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, is that right? Correct. Did you subsequently recover that safe? I did. Is it four zeros or three zeros? It was three zeros. Okay. Did you come to learn what the default code is for that safe? It's zero, zero, zero. Now, <clears throat> what did you find inside that safe? Yes, yeah, so inside the safe there was a 22 Caltech handgun and a 22 Derringer, which is like a single shot handgun was inside of the safe when it was opened up. Okay. Once the search warrant was officially authorized by the judge, did you participate in the search of the home? I did. And there are actually two occasions on which detectives entered the home with authorization from the search warrant. Is that correct? Correct. So once was November 30th, the evening of the shooting, and their time was September, I'm sorry, December the 13th? Correct. Okay, both 2021. Obviously. Correct. Okay. All right, I'm going to take you through some photographs of the home. Um, first of all, prior to a search warrant being executed of somebody's residence, are photographs taken? They are. Are they taken before or after the home is searched? Uh, before. Okay. So any photograph received from November the 30th, 2021, was taken before the room was searched by an detective? That's correct. This is Exhibit 249. Tell us what we're looking at here. Yeah, so the initial picture, that's the front door of the residence, right? You walk into your immediate right, there's couches and a TV uh, in the living room area. So I'll try to take us through the home as you would walk through it. So we have the door in, in the frame here? Correct, that's okay. the front door that faces the street. That's the front door in the living room, okay. This is 250, what is this? It's just a uh, wider angle, it's the couch that we saw in the initial picture, the other couch that, that, that would be facing the front door. Okay, so if you step into the front door and you turn to your right, this is what you'd be looking at? Correct. All right, this is exhibit 251, what is this? Yeah, same thing, right, you walk in the front door, this would be to your immediate right, and kind of straight ahead, there's just the couches and then a chair, table. Okay, here's 252, again, we see the front door? Yep, so that would be, now you'd actually be facing the front door, that would be just the TV stand, which had the TV on it towards the front door. Okay, and you told us that there was the living room and then in the same area, you, you described the dining room? Correct. Okay. This is exhibit 272, what do we see here? Yep, so that was the dining room, it was uh, some Christmas decorations, uh, dining room table. And this photograph was taken on December the 13th, 2021? Yes, this was not a okay. video. So this is, if you walk in the front door and you turn to your left, is that right? Correct, yep, you walk in and your immediate left would be this. And here's 273, what do we see here? Yep, so that'd be when you walk in to the right was the living room, to the left was the dining room, and. Directly ahead of the dining room was the doorway that leads to the kitchen, which you can kind of see in the background there is the kitchen. Okay. Here's 274. Yep, so this would just be a, a picture of the kitchen, the island, the refrigerator. And as you can see further down in the picture is the door to the master bedroom. Okay, so this would be if you step towards that hallway towards the kitchen? Correct. You have, you're, you're exiting the living room, there's that little doorway, and that's going to take you right into the kitchen area. Okay, we'll talk more about the kitchen in a few minutes. First, I want to take you through... Uh, one of the shooter's bedrooms identified as the middle bedroom. Okay. okay, this is exhibit 206. What do we see here? Yep, so that would be, there's a hallway, there's a bedroom to the left, bathroom, bedroom to the right. This is the bedroom to the left, which is the middle bedroom. Um, that was right when you walked in the bedroom, there was a, a bed with uh, various belongings on it, and then on the, on the wall you can see some uh, 
shooting targets, gun or targets. Okay. And as a police officer, you've been to a shooting range before, is that right? Correct. Okay. These are the type of targets consistent with what you obtained in a shooting range? Correct. Okay. And this photograph is taken November the 30th, 2021? Yes. This is Exhibit 207. Are we in the same room? Same room, just uh, off the bed there. There was that uh, desk with a TV. Um, just things all over the floor. Um, yeah, that, that was the natural state of the bedroom we got in the house. When you say natural state, that, that's before the detective searched it? Yeah, correct. Okay. And this plywood right here, can you tell us about this, please? Yeah, so that, um, that part of the bedroom actually leads, that would have been a window that would have gone to the master bedroom. Um, I believe the master bedroom is probably an add-on. Um, so that would be a window that would lead you to the master bedroom. Okay, so, so we're making sure we're oriented. This middle bedroom is adjacent to both the master bedroom on one side and then the bathroom on the other. Correct. Okay. This is exhibit 208. Is the same room from a different vantage point? Same room, yep. The, uh, just another little uh, dresser there, the closet on the left. Okay. Exhibit 209. Same thing, just the uh, various things on the floor, clothing, um, the chairs, same bedroom. And exhibit 210. Yep, same bedroom, just kind of an outer shot that shows the, uh, the whole bedroom there. Sir, as a, as a detective, tell us why it's important for someone to capture a, the natural state of something from different angles. Yeah, so I mean, when you conduct a search warrant, obviously you, you want to be cognizant of the fact that someone's house, you don't want to tear the house up, but I mean, you're going to go through the house and things are going to get moved around, um, do the best to clean up afterwards, but uh, when you want to, a picture of this can show you what the house looked like right when you walked in, nothing was changed, and what the livable conditions were when we got there. Okay, and is that also why you would take multiple pictures of one bedroom just from different angles? Correct, yeah, just so you can get a full shot of what the uh, what was actually going on inside of the bedroom. This is exhibit 211. Is this also the middle bedroom? That is, yep, it's the closet in the middle bedroom. Exhibit 212, same closet? Same closet, you can see there in the bottom on the chair was the uh, butt of the, uh, which Mr. Crumley described as like the um, rifle style BB gun. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. This is exhibit 213, what do we see here? Yeah, those are the, uh, the targets that I described earlier. They're Visibly been used. Um, they visibly they have bullet holes in them, multiple bullet holes in both of them. That was on the wall right next to the bed, the shooter's bedroom. This is exhibit 214. Yeah, same thing, just a different angle. Um, that's the bed to your far left, and then the uh, the used shooting target on the top right corner. If there were any other posters or pictures on the wall, that would have been depicted in the photographs of detectives. Is that right? Correct. This is exhibit 215. You said. Uh, Picture of the bed. Um, there was clothing, clothing, some school books, uh, the knife on the bed. There just there was tons of different stuff on the bed. And so where where the 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 targets that were on the wall that'd be just where this um, photograph cuts off at the top. Is that yeah, right? just above the bottom. Okay. The top part of the target would be or of this picture where, where the targets would be. Okay. Here's 216. What are we looking at here? Yep. So that's a uh, like a nightstand just off the bed. Various things on the nightstand. And 242, this is a closer version, close, excuse me, a closer photograph of the items on the nightstand. Yep, correct. It was um, various spent shell casings, um, looks like various uh, caliber spent shell casings inside the uh, plastic container, which is on the nightstand, which is directly next to the uh, shooter's bed. And this is exhibit 243. You mentioned the butt of the, the rifle of that gun in an earlier photograph. Is this what you're referring to? Correct. When I was speaking with James earlier, the video you played earlier, you kind of described that was the one he told me not to be uh, freaked out about. Um, it was the BB gun rifle that was on the, uh, in the shooter's bedroom on his computer chair. And that's how it was when it was found. This is exhibit 244. What's this? So that would be part of the dresser there that the TV's on. Um, he had. There is there's a notebook there, uh, pencil stuff like that, his wallet. Um, that was on the TV stand. In in the middle bedroom stuff? Correct, so the middle bedroom. Okay. And 245, same drawer, different angle? Yeah, correct. Looks like there's a lighter. Um, maybe those are fireworks of some kind. Um, just other, another notebook. And that was also in the uh, middle bedroom on the dresser there. Okay. And exhibit 246, we're still in the middle bedroom? Yep, still in the middle bedroom, so that's going to be right at the front of the bed. Um, it's a bottle, it looks like it's an empty bottle of Canada House, which is bourbon, whiskey, 
Now I'm going to move on to the north bedroom. This was identified as the shooter's other bedroom? Correct. Okay, so this would be the bedroom on the other side of the bathroom? Yep, so when you came into the, out of the kitchen, you made that right. It was a small hallway straight ahead of the bathroom. To the right was going to be the bedroom we're going to see now, which I think is the north bedroom. And to the left is that middle bedroom, which you guys just saw in the pictures there. Okay, so here's exhibit 217. What are we looking at here? Yep, so this is kind of a, uh, a shot of the overall bedroom on the right, um, which is also the shooter's bedroom, second bedroom. 218, same north bedroom, but from a different angle? Correct. That would be right when you walk into your immediate left. There's a TV stand, a TV, um, some holy on the floor, and on your right there you can see the bed, which had uh, various things spread all over it. Okay. Again, this is the natural state of how you found it? Correct. 219, what are we looking at here? Yep, so that would be you walk in, you make a left. At this point, they're kind of rounding the back. I'm sorry, 282, I misspoke. It would just be the picture of the... Uh, of the bed, and then on the, in the far left corner there is a litter box, cat yeah, litter box on the ground there. You said far left corner? Yeah, so you get right there. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, just various clothing and other items on the bed. Uh, 219, are we still in the north bedroom? Correct, it's the closet, uh, closing the closet. All right, 220, what is this? It's just a bed. Um, again, various things on the bed. Um, this is 247. Yeah, so that was a notebook that was recovered in the bedroom. Um, obviously, has some pictures of a rifle on it. Um, looks like another handgun in the bottom left there. Okay, that's 247. That was found on the bed in the north bedroom? Yeah, correct. Uh, here's 221. Are we still in the north bedroom? Yeah, so that's just now you're like looking out towards the bedroom. That's the, that doorway to the far left is the door that leads you out of the bedroom. That open door was the open door to the bedroom that we saw the initial picture. Just straight directly across the hall. They were both the shooter's bedrooms. Okay, did you observe anything on the shelf? <laughs> yeah, there were some uh, knives, various knives on the shelves. Okay, and that's depicted in Exhibit 248? Correct. And then finally, Exhibit 222, this is... Standing in the north bedroom, looking down at the, the TV with it. Yeah, it was the, the TV stand. It had a little fireplace there and various items on the TV stand. Okay, so we, we mentioned the bathroom that was adjacent to these two bedrooms. This is exhibit 223. Does this accurately depict what you observed that day? Yep, it does. Now, did you also participate in the search of the master bedroom? I did. Okay, you mentioned what you observed during that. Um, process when you secured the home, mm -hmm. but you participate in the search as well? Mm -hmm. Correct. This is exhibit 224. What do we see here? Yes, you can walk into the master bedroom, which you'll see other pictures here, but to your immediate right, the master bedroom was the bed. Um, and right when you walked in, this was the first thing you could see was the open gun box. Um, and that box next to it is an empty box of uh, nine millimeter ammunition. And this is exactly how we, we saw it when we did the initial search of the house. And then when we came back in, once the search warrant was granted, this is this is how it was when we came in. Okay. And this box right here is the uh, empty box of ammunition, the red box? Correct, nine millimeter ammunition. <laughs> this is exhibit 225. This is the same master bedroom? Yeah, just kind of a different view, but that's. Uh, I knew you make a right in the bedroom. The bed was against the wall, and that was one of the sides of the bedroom. Exhibit 226? Yep, same thing, just the other side of the bed. So that, that far window right there on the left would be the window that would face the backyard of the residence. Okay. Exhibit 227? Yep, far left side of the bed there. Um, that's the outer window that faces the backyard, and it's just clothing on the ground. Okay, 228, this is still in the master bedroom? Yep, so that's the door there to the master bedroom. Um, when you walked in immediately on this the This is the door here? Correct. Yep. Okay. And on the wall there was an uh, armoire. Uh, on the far, or on the immediate right was that armoire. Okay. And this is exhibit 229? Yep, just a different shot. That's the door. Immediate right is that armoire. Um, to your left, and that picture is the bed. Okay, just so we're clear, all of these pictures of the master bedroom were taken November the 30th before the room was searched? Correct. Uh, was the TV stand searched as well? It was. Okay. And that's where James told you to look for the 22 caliber Correct. firearms? Correct. Uh, exhibit 230, this is the TV stand I'm referring to? Yep, so that was what James had described when I spoke with him. Um, that's the TV stand right when you walk into the bedroom uh, to your immediate left was that TV stand, multiple drawers, and the TV on it. Uh, but then the door you're seeing, there was like a sliding glass door that would lead you to the outside backyard of the residence. Okay. 
This is exhibit 231. This is a straight on view? Correct. Exhibit 233. This is angle to the left? Correct. All right. 234. What are we looking at here? Yep. So um, that TV stand we just saw, the furthest right door that was opened up, and that was where the, uh, the gun box was, or the gun safe was located right there on the top shelf, as it is in the picture there. Okay. And that was um, recovered by you? It was. Okay. And did you use the code 000 to open it? I did. Did you open it with that? It did. Okay. Was ammunition found on that shelf as well? Yep. So when you when the uh, gun box was removed from there, there was uh, two magazines, the holster. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see there. Uh, there's a box of uh, ammunition there in the back. Okay. You say holster. What we're looking at, the object on the right, that's the holster? Yeah, it's like a cloth holster, okay. black cloth holster. This is exhibit 235. 236, were those items from that right um, drawer taken out and put on top of the TV stand? Yep, so at this point they were removed from the picture you just saw. They were put on top of the TV stand. On the left there you can see the two magazines, gun magazines up, and then there's the bag, bag with the uh, ammunition in it. And then I think on the right there's the box for the ammunition. Okay, and that's 22 caliber ammunition? Correct. Okay, did you participate in the search of the kitchen as well? I did. 37, this is what, so at, let me ask you, what did you, what is this picture? Yep, so the um, black firearm there is a 22 uh, Caltech handgun that was recovered when I opened the safe. Uh, the, the silver uh, gun there is a 22 Derringer, it's a single shot gun that was also found in the, uh, in the safe once I opened it up and then there was Another uh, magazine there in the far left, which is kind of hard to see, and then there's some uh, ear protection. The orange ear protection is also located in the safe when it was opened. So this is 238. What is this? That's the uh, 22 Derringer that was recovered in the safe. And 240. That's the 22 uh, Caltech handgun that was recovered in the safe. Okay, so this is 276. Can you tell us what we're looking at here? Yep, so that would be the kitchen, uh, the pictures you saw earlier, uh, that, that would have been on the right hand side, and then you saw the pictures of the kitchen, it's the refrigerator. Okay, so I'm going to try to take us around the kitchen. Is it, well, first of all, is there an island in the kitchen? Yeah, so um, when you're looking outside of the kitchen, there was an island in the middle, uh, there was across from that was like a sink, some shelving units, and then across, all across from the island is this, which is the fridge, more shelving units, um, all located in the kitchen. Okay. This is 278, so this would be on the other side of the kitchen? Yep, correct. So that would just be, when I describe the other side of the island, you have the sink there in the left, uh, the stove, um, and just various cabinets and other okay. things in the kitchen there. Did you have occasion to search in this island here? I did. Okay. This is 277, that's the island I'm referring to? Correct. All right. Exhibit 253. Tell us what we're looking at here and where it was found. Yep, so on the far right corner there, you can see a black, uh, which is later discovered to be a black gun box there in the far right corner. Let me back up for one second. So we're talking about, I'm sorry, this cupboard here, the right cupboard of that I island? I believe it was, yes, the right okay. cupboard, correct. And that's 277. Here's 253? Correct. Yep, so there in the far right corner, you can kind of see that black uh, gun box was located there in the island on the right side of the island. Okay, and was that, was that removed? It was. Okay. This exhibit 255, what is this? Yep, so that's just the, uh, the gun box was taken out of there. And, uh, that's just the picture of the gun box. It was the gun box for that Caltech, that black uh, firearm that was found in the bedroom. This is the gun box for that 22 handgun. Okay. And this is 256. What are we looking at here? Yep, so the gun box was opened. Uh, it was obviously empty besides that uh, cable lock was located inside of the gun box. Uh, if you look closely, you can see the keys to the gun or to the cable lock there at the bottom part of the baggie there. Um, yeah, that's how that was located when it was opened up. Did you or any other detective find any other locking mechanism for a firearm anywhere in the home? No. You, know, you want to say this, that the gun box next to the blender, what kind of gun box was that? That was for the uh, the twenty two Caltech. Caltech was the black handgun that was found in the safe in the bedroom. Okay. All right. Okay. And that's in Exhibit 253, which is also depicted in Exhibit 255, and that's where the 
cable lock was contained in depicting exhibit 256. Is that right? Correct. Okay. All right. Um, all right. What are we looking at here at 257? That's just a gaming system. I believe it was a PlayStation uh, gaming system that was located in the residence. Okay. 258. Yeah, those are um, games for that uh, gaming system, Battlefield, uh, Assassin's Creed, Battlefront, um, just various games that were located inside of the residence for that gaming system. All right. Here's 259. Yep. Yeah, looks like those are more games. Grand Theft Auto. Um, I'm not familiar with the other one. Battlefield and a few sort right there. Okay. 260. Yeah, Call of Duty. Uh, on Titan, some other games that we'll be using our gaming system. All right. Was anything searched outside of the home? Yes. Yeah, so outside of the house, there was a vehicle, a great Kia, that was located in the driveway. Uh, Mr. Crumley's vehicle. Uh, this is a picture of the, when the trunk was opened up, what was in the back of the vehicle. Was there any, uh, was there a garage or a shed associated with the home? Yeah, no garage, so um, the first picture we saw was the outside of the house. There was a, a driveway to the left of that that led to the backyard, and then in the backyard there was a shed in the backyard, but there was no enclosed garage or anything like that. Okay, was the shed searched as well? The shed was searched, correct. All right, here's exhibit 298. Before we get to the shed, what are we looking at here? Yeah, it's just like an overhang, like almost like a foyer outdoor area that was covered. Um, there's a grill out there, like a seating area, which is on the back of the residence prior to getting to the shed. Here's exhibit 299, is the shed you refer to? Correct. Exhibit 264, what are we seeing here? Yeah, so you walked into the shed immediate, immediately through the door to the right, there was a couple of BB guns right leaning against the wall there. As you can see the one, the brown one to the far left of the picture, and then the black one which is rested against kind of the door frame there. Okay. Exhibit 265? Yeah, just a different angle. Uh, you can see the, the black BB gun in the right corner, and then the brown one's right there visible. Leaning against the wall. You see the 266? This, this is like on the workbench in the uh, shed there. Um, there was some BB guns recovered. That's like a Uzi style uh, BB gun that was sitting on the bench when we went inside of the shed. You can see the 267? Another BB gun. It's uh, like a 357 style BB gun that was uh, seated on. Same thing, right by the Uzi there. Right? We walked in, there was a big, a big bench, and that was on the bench when you walked into the shed. Okay. Here's exhibit 268. Yeah, so you can kind of see the uh, work area there in the back where the BB guns were recovered. This is just kind of an outer shot of some of the chairs and the, and the floor of the shed. Uh, 269, where are we looking at here? Yeah, so that was outside of the shed. It was various uh, CO2 containers which are used to shoot BB guns, pellet guns on the ground there. Okay. Nope. Back in the home, exhibit 289, where was this taken? Yeah, so when you, as I described, when you walk in the hallway to before the master bedroom, there was like a landing that led you to the basement and to the outside of the house. So this was just an outer picture of that landing area. The left of that photo would take you to the basement and to the right would take you to the, to the backyard. Okay. And exhibit 295? Yeah, same thing. Just kind of a landing, just an outer picture of that. Once you go there, the right is that door that leads to the backyard. And if you went down and made a left, that would take you down into the basement area of the house. Any areas of the home that were not photographed during the execution search warrant? No, everything was photographed. Okay. Now, we heard the video where you told James that he and his wife could leave. That was timestamp at 3.42 p.m. At some point, did they return? Yep, so um, after we were done with the search warrant, they returned to the residence and, uh, yeah, they spoke with the Lieutenant Mars band. Okay. There were there phone seeds at that point? They were. Okay. And at some point, were they turned over to Oakland County Computer Crimes? Yeah, they were driven back to the high school by myself and Detective McPherson, and they were given to uh, Detective McGrowski. Nothing further. Thank you, Judge. Cross. Yes, Your Honor. One moment. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to take you back just to the beginning of your direct. In exhibit, oh, this is going to log on. In exhibit um, 205, there we go. Exhibit 205 is the map that was drawn. Excuse me. The map that was drawn of the Crumbly residence. Correct. And this is of the interior of the residence. You agree? Correct. Now, you also looked at the exterior of the residence because you went in the shed in the backyard, correct? Correct. 
And if you recall, it's a fairly deep lot. Yeah, it's got a large backyard. Okay, so what you see from the street, the house is closer to the street than closer to the back of the lot. Would that be fair? That's fair. Okay. So it's not like a, a small backyard. It's it's fairly deep, which means that there's a, a lot of space between the back of the backyard and the front of the house. Is that fair? Yeah, so there was a fairly large fenced-in backyard. Um, I don't know exactly how big, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was large. It was a lot of space. Thank you. <clears throat> when you first went into the home, you, you did the initial sweep to make sure that there were no other people in the house, correct? Correct. And, and that's common. That's common practice for executing a search warrant and securing a premises. Correct. And in the home, you noticed that there was an open Sig Sauer box with an empty box of 9 millimeter ammunition in the master bedroom on the bed. Yeah, correct. That was one of the first things I saw when I walked in the bedroom. In the master bedroom, you identified as James Crumley's bedroom. Correct. And we'll look at, if you need to, we can look at the photo. But do you recall that that, that box of ammunition was Patriot Defense 9 millimeter ammunition? That sounds correct. Okay. We looked at Exhibit 300, which was the first video from approximately 2.50 p.m. in the back of the patrol car. Do you recall reviewing that video? I do. You would agree that as James's wife is being placed in the patrol car with handcuffs, James is obviously distraught. He's asking questions like, why are you in handcuffs? Why is she in handcuffs, correct? I'm going to object to the form of the question of obviously distraught. I don't think he's able to give that sort of testimony. Uh, um, were you able to observe his demeanor? Yeah, I mean, he was obviously wondering what was going on, asking questions. Um, yeah. He was upset. And I don't really know him. I mean, he was asking a lot of questions. Um, Trying to figure out what was going on. Correct. You watched the video more, and you reviewed that prior that video prior to coming in today, correct? The in car video. Yes, the exhibit three hundred. I've seen the video. Before. Okay. Correct. And the reason I'm asking that is because you wouldn't have seen this exchange unless you reviewed the video, which is why I'm asking. But there was a point in the video where James leans over to his wife and tells her he loves her. Do you remember seeing that? Correct. And if you recall, he comments, just in case anything happens, I love you, and he gives her a kiss. Correct. So you would agree that James had some concern that something bad might happen? I believe at some point he states somewhere along the lines of that, so yeah, correct. You said after that Exhibit 300 video, James was transported to the substation to be interviewed by law enforcement, correct? Yeah, like I said, there was a lot going on. Initially, we were we were instructed to talk to him, and then after speaking with Sergeant Bryant, it was determined that he had already spoke with him, so he was brought back at that point. Right, so either on the way or once you got to the substation, you learned that, that James had already spoken to Sergeant Bryant prior to you all arriving at his residence, and so you took him back to the residence. Correct. Exhibit 204 is at approximately 3.42 p.m. Oh, let me go back to Exhibit 300. There was a point in that video where James makes the comment to his wife about um, not talking without a lawyer. Do you remember seeing that? Correct. Okay. Now, you know that if somebody is being suspected of a crime, you've been a detective for a while. Is that fair? Fair. Okay. You know that if somebody's being suspected of a crime or suspected of doing something wrong, that they have the right to counsel. Correct. Asking for a lawyer or wanting a lawyer doesn't mean anything other than I want a lawyer with me. Is that fair? Fair. Okay. Exhibit 204 is after that initial video with James and his wife in the back of the patrol car. You agree with that? Um, is that the uh, video where I was speaking with him? Yes, at 3.42 p.m. Correct. At that point, you're waiting for the search warrant to be signed by the court. I am. And you talk to James and... You have a, a couple of, of exchanges, and then you ask him if he's willing to tell you where the firearms are, correct? Yeah, I kind of explained him that he could sit in the car, he could go sit in his car, um, didn't have to say where he was when he was talking to me, and then after that, yeah, we had the exchange about where the weapons were in the house. And he used the word absolutely, mm -hmm. if he would be willing to tell you where those firearms were, correct? Yeah, he was cooperating when I was speaking with him. He told you that they were in a gun case? Correct. That was locked? Correct. That it was in the back of the house, the room in the back of the house? Correct. In the TV stand? Correct. He told you that it was the right cabinet door? Correct. That the gun safe contained a 22 Derringer and a 22 Caltech? Correct. And then he gave you the combination, but we would agree that he actually added a digit. 
to the combination. Yeah, he told me there was four zeros, and it actually it was three zeros to get inside the safe. And it's obvious by looking at the gun case, or I'm sorry, the gun safe, that there's only three numbers on it, right? Yeah, the dial has three numbers on it. So you couldn't have added a fourth number. Correct. You would agree that there was a lot going on at that moment. There was a lot going on at that moment for both you and also Mr. Crumbly. Correct. Through your involvement in this case, you're not aware um, whether you're not aware that anyone else in the house had knowledge of that combination. Is that fair? You don't know if anyone else had it. Yeah, I don't know. And James also made comments to you about being completely open and wants you to do whatever you have to do. Is that correct? Correct. And you said he was cooperative with you. When I spoke with him, he was, yes. In fact, he even commented and told you about that um, that rifle-looking BB gun that was in his son's room and, and wanted to assure you that it, it wasn't what it looked like. Yeah, he told me before going in the house that there was going to be that um, rifle that was a BB gun sitting in the shooter's bedroom, correct? There was some exchange, and it sounded like like James was going to leave the premises with his wife, but said that he needed his phone back. At that point, you all had taken his phone, if you recall. Yeah, so I, did, I at that point did not have his phones, and I honestly don't know who had the phones at that point, so I don't recall. You knew at that point that he didn't have his phone, based on his statement to you? Yeah, I knew that at that point his phone was not on his person. And we'll get back to that in a minute, because you did talk about that a little bit more. In Exhibit 215, which is a photo of, I believe the, I think we call it the north bedroom, I'm sorry, the middle bedroom, there, you commented that there's a knife on the bed, it was a butter knife, correct? Yes, correct. Exhibit 244, which is also in the middle bedroom, is a photo of the open desk drawer, and there's a notebook, color pencils, and miscellaneous, miscellaneous items. Correct. You didn't open that notebook to see what was in it, correct? I personally did not. You don't know if Mr. Crumbly knew what was in that notebook, is that correct? I, I, mean, I wouldn't be able to say. What you would have no way of knowing, is that right? I, I don't know. Either. Exhibit 245 um, is a picture of the bed. I'm sorry, it's a picture of another notebook in the desk. It's a, a green notebook, correct? Correct. Same questions. You didn't open that notebook. I personally did not open that notebook. You don't know what's in it? I did not know. Um, you don't know, you have no knowledge whether Mr. Crumbly knew. I wouldn't be able to say one way or another. 246, um, it's a photo of an empty bottle of Canada House whiskey next to the bed. Correct. You don't know how that bottle got there? That was there when we came in the house. Right. You have no knowledge of, of how it got there, who had it, who put it there. You have no idea, you just know that it was there. Correct. Exhibit 220 is a, a picture, I believe, also of the... Maybe the, this is the second bedroom, so I believe this is the north bedroom. Um, exhibit 220 is a picture of the bed, mm -hmm. and that would be, is that a yes? Yes. Okay. And that would be uh, Mr. Crumbly's son's second bedroom. That's what it's been referred to, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Exhibit 240, I believe it's 247, I can't read my own writing, is a, a notebook that's open on the bed. You recall seeing that photo? Correct. And inside that notebook, there are photos of gut drawings. Correct. That notebook from 247, if you recall, is the same notebook from 220. If you'd like to see the photos, I can, I can pull yeah, them. Yeah, so in all honesty, I didn't have a ton to do with those notebooks. Um, I recall seeing those in there. I don't know where that one came from. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. If you recall from Exhibit 220, the notebook is closed or, or not displayed open, and it's under some items on the bed, if you recall. Correct. Okay. So you didn't open that notebook, you didn't go through that notebook, you have no knowledge of what was in that notebook other than what's in the photo. Yeah, I didn't personally at that, at that time go through the notebook. And again, through your involvement in this case, you, you have no knowledge whether Mr. Crumbly was aware of what was in any of those notebooks. Yeah, I, I don't know. In Exhibit 235 is the, that is the gun safe, or I'm sorry, that is after you've removed the gun safe from the TV stand in the cupboard. Um, yeah, I saw a lot of, can, I don't know what picture you're referring to, I'm sorry. I yes, let me see if I can find it. Are you, are you referring to the one that was recovered in the kitchen? No, this is the actual gun safe that was recovered in the, actually, you know what, let me do it this way. I have a hard copy of it. It'll be easier for me to get to. 
May I approach, Your Honor? Sure. Thank you. I might also ask about 236, so I'm going to bring the both of you. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah, so 235 is the picture of the, the, the master bedroom. It's the dresser that where the gun safe was recovered from. At this point, the gun safe had been removed. And all of this that you're seeing, the magazines, the uh, gun holster, and the bullets in the background were below that safe that we took out from there. And those magazines, the two magazines, those were empty. They were. When you say below, they were underneath on the lower shelf. Yep, no, so the, the gun safe was recovered on, excuse me, on top of all that. Oh, so okay. at this point, this picture is showing once the gun safe had been taken out, yep. and that's below that. And 236, if you could look at 236, that's a picture of the magazines and the ammunition that was removed from that cupboard, correct? Yeah, so at this point, everything was taken out and photographed on top of that TV stand there. It's the two, it's the two magazines, the, mag, or the bullets inside the bag, and the box of the ammunition was over. And the, I just wanted to confirm that those were the same magazines that were inside the cabinet. Yeah, correct. So those were empty? They were empty. May I approach, Your Honor? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Detective. Thanks. When you were discussing Exhibit 256 with the prosecution, the prosecutor specifically asked you if there were no other locking me mechanisms found in the home. Do you remember that question? I do. You arrived at the home after, if you recall, after 2 p.m. on November 30th of 2021. Yeah, it was short. It was around the time of the first video we saw. I don't know the exact time, but around the first time of the video we saw the first mm -hmm. video. So it's fair to say you have no knowledge of what was in that house prior to your arrival at approximately 2.50 on November 30th of 2021. Yeah, I can only speak to what I saw when I went inside the residence. I don't know what was there prior. You can't say whether or not there were any additional locking mechanisms in the house that morning. Is that fair? You have no knowledge of that. Again, yeah, I can only speak to what I saw, what I found. I, I don't know what was there prior. Exhibit 260. You went through some photos of video games. 257 was some video game, um, the gaming system. 258 were video games. 259 was more video games. 260, if you recall, and I can, I can hand you the exhibit if you'd like, was Call of Duty and a game that you weren't familiar with, Attack of Titan, Attack on Titan? Correct. Did you need to look at that exhibit? No, I don't. Okay. Call of Duty, you saw... Based on your testimony, it sounds like you were a little familiar with Call of Duty. Yeah, I, I don't play video games, but obviously I'm familiar just with seeing commercials and I'm aware of what Call of Duty is. Okay. And on the front, of, on, the, on the cover, it has WW2 for World War II. Is that correct? Correct. Call of Duty, you would agree, is a, is a military, a type of military video game. Correct. It's a, what would be described as a first-person shooter uh, video game. Correct. And if you know, and if you don't, please tell me you don't know. A person playing Call of Duty is a, a, a person holding a firearm in the video game and engaging in combat. If you know. I, I, honestly, I, I, I'm probably the last person to test about video games. I don't play video games. And I, I, I don't but to your knowledge, it is a military video game, which is a first-person shooter military video game. Correct. At the end of your direct testimony, you discussed that the prosecutor asked you if James Crumbly's phone was seized. Correct? Correct. Now, there are a couple of different ways that law enforcement can obtain somebody's cell phone. Would you agree with that? Correct. You can get a, a, a search warrant and take it from them, right? Correct. They can hand it to you, right? Correct. Um, you can say something like, you can give it to me or we'll get a search warrant, and they can hand it to you, right? Correct. In this case, if you recall, at some point, Mr. Crumley did not have his cell phone because he said, I need to get my cell phone back, correct? While in the back of a patrol car. Correct. At some point, he got his cell phone back. I, I don't, I didn't have any exchange with him after that about the cell phones. Honestly, I don't know okay. if he got it back. 
Now, do you recall that, if, if you're not aware, just let me know. Are you aware that there was some conversation about James and his wife giving their phones to law enforcement and them having to obtain some sort of another phone to be able to communicate with their family? Yeah, so at some point, uh, Lieutenant Marsband showed up at 112 East Street and um, he had a conversation with uh, James and Jennifer about the cell phones. I don't know the specific language of the search warrant, but um, the phones were given to Marsband and then he provided it to me and my partner and we took them back to the high school. And if you recall, there was also some discussion about how James and Jennifer could obtain kind of a temporary phone so that they would be able to communicate with people while law enforcement had their phones, if you recall. Yeah, that was a conversation I had with Lieutenant Marsband. I don't remember the specifics of the conversation, but I know that we have a conversation about the phones. Okay, so you just know that there was a conversation that occurred where it was discussed with James and Jennifer how to obtain like a temporary phone, like a, a track phone or something like that. I, I don't know the specifics of the conversation. I just know that they did have a conversation about it. Okay, thank you. No further questions, Ron. Yeah. Just quickly, thank you. Uh, Detective, did James ever once tell you that the six hour nine millimeter used to commit the Oxford High School shooting was ever locked up? He did not. Okay. Nothing further.